Hi again, guys. It's still May 15, 2019. The water level at Oroville Lake, 889 feet, 0.30. Listen to this. A CBS Sacramento newscast on the rumors at the Oroville Dam. Our incoming series of storms soaking in a runaway rumor tonight as some people who live in Oroville fear the dam is failing. But tonight, the Butte County Sheriff is saying that's just not true. And now the man who... That's not what he said. That's not what he said, Tony Lopez. What he said was, I visited the dam. I spoke with Army Corps uh, engineers and hydrology experts. And I questioned them about their ability to manage the inflow. Based upon all that, I don't believe there is a current imminent threat. If I come to believe there is a problem that puts the safety of our community in imminent danger, I will not hesitate to alert people. He did not say that the dam will not fail. Tony saying that's just not true and now the man who managed the spillway disaster is trying to manage this growing rumor. Yes, yeah, CBS 13's Rob Malcolm is live getting answers on what residents are so worried about right now. Rob? Yeah, that's right. Good evening, Tony and Shireen. It doesn't matter if you live upstream or downstream from the Oroville Dam. Pretty much everyone around here has a theory as to whether or not it's safe and with that storm quickly approaching, nerves here are obviously frayed. So how did this get started? Facebook is uh, mainly, and then word of mouth. Residents living near the Oroville Dam are being drenched in good news and bad news. As a rare spring storm moves into the area, they're flooded with rumors. The dam is at over its maximum capacity, and they can't let any water out of the spillway. The ground's too corroded up there. And why did they cut her off? I wonder, was she going to say something like, and the latest inspection failed? I just heard from a subscriber who lives in Chico, which is north of the Oroville area, but has friends and I think family in Oroville and is very concerned. Well, she spoke to Paul Preston today, Paul Preston, who has been speaking out about the uh, problems that are occurring at the Oroville Dam with their repairs. And he said that it failed the last inspection, which she wrote, she thinks was on Good Friday, whatever that date was, failed the inspection. That is why Paul Preston um, filed a complaint with the sheriff, and maybe that's why the sheriff went down to check things out. But the sheriff did not say the dam will not fail. And the sheriff sure did not say what you're about to hear in a little bit. There. You know what I mean? It's just, you're just basically putting a band-aid on a big patch. What some call a band-aid, others call a fix. It cost $1.1 billion to fix the dam after it was damaged in a storm February of 2017. And now state officials say it's as good as new. The dam. Okay, that is not what the sheriff said at all. And that is not what anyone is saying. It's as good as new. Don't worry. And a lot of people have uh, very good questions, and they can't seem to get answers from the Department of Water Resources. So, yes, a lot of speculation about what is going on at the Oroville Dam. The dam is safe, uh, and the spillway is safe, and if we need to use the spillway to manage lake levels, we are ready and able to do that. But today, a distant earthquake shook up a rumor that spread as quickly as it was squashed. People just worried about that there's supposedly been seismic activity inside the dam. There was a seismic activity that was triggered, um, but that was actually measuring an earthquake that happened earlier in the day in Papua New Guinea. Um, so some of our seismic equipment is actually really sensitive. The view it's really sensitive and it picks up activity from Papua New Guinea. Well, how about those, uh, what, are, what do we call them? The uh, extremely low frequencies that have been really, uh, well, based on my years of looking at radar, 
they have been blasting away in California. I have posted videos on it, but you have a standing, now constant, extremely low frequencies being emitted right at the Oregon, Northern California border, as you can see. And this is new, this pulse, this huge pulse up here, Northern Oregon and Washington. So, and we also have a huge pulse in Nevada. Boom, boom. Pulsating frequency is very dangerous. Here we go. See it? Okay. Yeah, so you've got your extremely low frequencies that are constant, but I'll show you a few more captures that I took earlier. The extremely low frequencies, yep, they've got them going. And do you have precipitation going on? Because when you look at radar, well, you got a little patch of precipitation uh, that dies at the Georgia-South Carolina border, um, but this was up here in Tennessee. Tennessee subscribers, are you getting a lot of rain? Did you get a lot of rain today? You have little eruptions of what, you know, it's, I guess, referred to as, uh, uh, what, precipitation? No, this isn't precipitation. Look at this. Oh, this is the rain train. Ah, right. New terms for our bizarre weather. But you can even see the extremely low frequencies right here that suddenly just show up. And if you can't see it on my video, then you can click on the link below and look at it yourself. So, yeah, what do we have? We've got on radar whole lot of pulsating Doppler radar stations. Um, and it does seem a little bit early. It's only 6.12 p.m. on the East Coast. And yeah, it is a little bit early for our Doppler radar to be kicking off. Oh, and it's kicking off right here. Oh, from Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska. Yeah, central United States, where they are claiming uh, severe weather coming. But it's supposed to be coming from the Pacific. Look at this. Huge pulses of frequencies taking place down here in the Sacramento area. if I am right on that, but also here in, in uh, Nevada and Washington. All right. Well, what we are seeing on satellite is a very different picture. So are you getting massive rainfall? Because what we are seeing here you should be. You should be getting it in Oregon. You should be getting it in Nevada, in Idaho. Look at the chemtrails in this. In the precipitation, you can see them right here. Oh, wow. That's a first for me. Um, look at them. You see the lines? You see the grid? They're going in both directions and, and you know, up and down and all over. <laughs> I have never seen this in precipitation. Now you can certainly see it on the periphery, but look at these lines. They are off the coast Uh, laying their 
concoction for storms. Look at this. It's very evident in the precipitation. I'm telling you, I don't think that there is precipitation going on. Um, it looks like there's a lot of it, but you guys have to let us know because, well, I'm not liking this world where I can't figure anything out definitively. I know for sure, and I have to rely on you guys. So this is Northern California. This is Oregon. This is Washington. Here, it looks like you have really bad storms um, in Nevada. Then going into Utah, up here, Montana. Is that Montana? I can't see the, the boundary line. So, yeah, it looks like a whole lot of precipitation going on. Look at these chemtrails. Right smack in the precipitation. Unbelievable. Well, you know, let me just take you to... Um, another site and we'll see what that looks like uh, way down here and we will go to how about Atlantic Combo well it looks like this is heading north Oh, but this is heading kind of east. But this is heading north. Well, there's no telling. And are they bringing it around? Yeah, this goes right into... It looks like you're having severe weather in Utah. What is that? All right, this is Northern California. This is Oregon. This is Washington. So, Nevada. Yeah, into Utah. All right. Would love to hear from you guys. Look at the high frequency heating going on right down here. Uh, It's, they're just blasting away. So, um, he didn't say what these people are saying. In fact, I think he was very careful in his um, posting. But he didn't say that it's good as new. He has not said that the Oroville Dam will not fail. Uh, he's just simply saying based upon everything he has heard, he does not believe there's any imminent threat as the water level continues to inch up. Beaches are being closed. Ontario shoreline won't be open this year. It's due to the rising water levels in the lake. New Thane's town supervisor says Old Cut Beach is closed for the entire season due to the flooding. The beach closed back in 2017 because of flooding as well. It cost about $20,000 to fix the damage back then. By the way, the splash pad at the park will remain open. All summer? Wow. Popular. Closing beaches for the entire summer. It's not even summer yet. But listen to this. This is a uh, little house on the road. And he is camping in Texas. Well, pretty sure we're gonna get kicked out of this this campground at COE here in Texas. We've been here six days. Yeah, I used to. Be, I actually made a video on that uh, picnic table there just a few days ago, a couple days ago. And uh, over here, the water was starting to recede on the second day that we were here. So this one was covered, you know, was uh, partially covered, and then it uh, 
it filled, filled back, back up, so now you can see that there's no picnic table, no barbecue pit. So you can see in this footage here, this is a little stream that just a few days ago I could walk across. As a matter of fact, I got some footage here, I'll show you in a minute, uh, where I was standing right next to it, it was just a little trickle, was, uh, but not now. Uh, you okay, so I will link below to everything. You can watch the entire video. Uh, where is the water coming from? I think one of uh, the areas in which this water is coming from is from underneath. Yes, we have a whole lot of water underneath. So to create this massive flooding that is taking place, and lakes and rivers and streams all over are filling up, and it seems that uh, there's an awful lot of areas that are still sitting in water. The water has not receded. What is going on? Um, yeah, we can only speculate. That's what we're left at, you know, but it does seem odd. You know, I, I, I don't think that unless anybody has seen the rain as if it was turning on a tub, you know, the faucet just coming down. Um, I don't see even torrential rain causing the kind of flooding that we are seeing all over the place. Officials preparing for storms, possible flooding in Arkansas River. Um, after Missouri River flooding, thousands cut off by closed bridges that are still closed two months later. Two months later. So not only is water not receding in areas, but so many roads have been destroyed, bridges closed. All of this is causing a whole lot of inconvenience. Here, um, flooding becoming bigger problem uh, for Michigan. And the reason why I chose this was because, oh, a number on homes. Very hard to find how many homes have been flooded. 3,000 homes damaged in Wayne County, Michigan. One county, 3,000 homes. Think about all the counties that have had massive flooding just in the last two months. We're talking a lot of people. Oswego County declares emergency over Lake Ontario. Um, states of emergency have been declared on both sides of Canada and New York. Uh, Oswego along with Cayunga, Monroe, and Wayne. Get ready for your flooding. The water levels keep rising. Manhattan, Kansas warns of potential flooding from Tuttle Creek Lake releases because the water keeps rising. So they're going to have to release the water. And if they have to release the water, well, a whole lot of uh, evacuations. Um, they're even asking people to start preparing so that if we do have to release the water, and right now it's at 1,123 feet, They'll release when it rises to 1,136. Prepare now for evacuation. Get your flood insurance now because it takes 30 days um, for your coverage to start. But yeah, they may have to release it. A whole lot of evacuations. Homes will be flooded. Now, I am not showing you the same areas. In these videos, I'm showing you different areas that have been flooded. Um, Brazoria County, Texas, look at this flooding. This is what it looks like now. Now. The flooding that has occurred. It's staggering the numbers of people who have had their homes or businesses and or businesses 
flood it out. This is what it looks like right now. So, uh, didn't I post on Houston? Did I post any flooding on Houston yesterday? I don't think so. So, this is from what rains a couple of nights ago. Insane. Unbelievable. People really need to be looking into weather modification and stop with the closed mind. Just consider it. Open your mind a little bit. Do a little bit of research. Do a little bit of research to find out what is taking place here. So they have this uh, also on YouTube. Victoria County, County dealing with massive, massive flooding, flooding at this hour. Sky, Sky 2 captured the flooding from high above the Holiday Lakes subdivision. Channel 2's Kathy Hernandez joins us live in Brazoria County at this hour. Kathy, so flooded there. Absolutely. You can see right behind us, some parts of the town are dry, but right behind us here, other parts are flooded and families remain out of their homes. That's Russell Anderson. His wife and his five children live on Western Way and Creekside in Holiday Lakes. It's an interesting area. He has a lake behind his house with Oyster Creek nearby and the Brazos River just three miles away. Russell's family evacuated Saturday. Since then, they've been staying at a hotel, but he's been coming back every day to check on his home. And take a look at these pictures. He says he's elevated his home after the flooding year after year, and the water didn't make it inside his home this time. Still, he says the water at his home is about four to five feet high from the ground. It's stressful, definitely. I mean, we've been through, since I moved out here, two of them back to back, and this is the third one. You can pretty much say back to back to back. We skipped 2018, and 2019, it hit us again. So it's, uh, I mean, we're tired of it, obviously. Yeah, obviously they are tired of it. Russell right now is still back there checking on his home. He says every day he's been going back there, taking pictures for insurance purposes, and then coming back out to just check on his family and stay with his family nearby at a hotel. As for the officials here, Brazos Bend State Park will remain closed until at least June 5th. That's what... Okay. Water is not receding. Rivers, streams, lakes continue to rise. So, unfortunately, we're looking at, we're looking at a whole lot of people who will be flooded out. And the numbers, really, I mean, my God. Oh, hang on. So, this was last night. And when was this? Uh... 515, this was 12.30 a.m. on the East Coast. Look at California. Look at, <laughs> look at all of these states. I mean, wow. Lots of dangerous frequencies being emitted all over. Frequencies going right through California. Um, and odd, th this is very odd. Now, I've not seen the, it, it looks like the extremely low frequencies are literally stretching precipitation. You know, all of right up here so let me pause you for a sec this is at 3 a.m. yeah I have trouble sleeping 3 a.m. and still no precipitation whatsoever but an awful lot of um, frequencies 
going through California. And constant frequencies in Arizona. Look how this look how this precipitation just when it gets close to the radar station disappears. Yes, they can use these frequencies to, well, prevent flooding, but they don't do that. Whole lot of um, intense frequencies. When you see the fanned out in like 360 degrees, the extremely low frequency is being found out. Um, they're upping the power of them. But look at this. Up here in Minnesota, it's literally the extremely low frequencies are either catching the precipitation and splitting it or creating it, I don't know, but right here. And that's into South Dakota from Nebraska and this in, in uh, Minnesota, which I think, one second, This whole line just literally dissipates. So now we're at 11.50 a.m. on the East Coast and precipitation in California. A lot of extremely low frequencies being set off. Southern California um, and Texas, yep, Houston or Galveston area. The extremely low frequency is also coming from Louisiana into right there, shot. Uh, Kansas blasting away. Nebraska blasting away. I, I'm telling you, I am seeing increasing um, powerful frequencies in many more states and this was happening. Look at wild, man. It's these extremely low frequencies out of Alabama, Georgia border, right smack into upstate South Carolina and into Mississippi. This is the wide range of extremely low frequencies, 300 miles. Why are they doing this? I don't know. I don't know. So, yeah, the uh, satellite at 11.50 a.m. was... You should have... Did you get rain? Here's California. Rain coming in to all of these states. And not much has changed. So I, I have to hear from you guys.
So this was um, 8.50 a.m. You still have these very, uh, a whole lot of extremely low frequencies being set off and they're constant now on the Oregon Northern California border. They weren't constant at 8.50 a.m. your time. You can see the Nexrad harp rings um, right on through down here which is, I believe, the Sacramento area, maybe Bay area, and I did it slowly because I wanted to see. You can see all of the, the sharp defined lines means that this is being hit with frequencies. You can see this, you know, the, it's like a, a pie cutout, you know. Um, look at this. Entirely man made. The entire thing is man made. This is not a picture of Mother Nature uh, with her, you know, precipitation. Mother Nature did not have spikes of precipitation or pie cutouts of precipitation or little squares of precipitation. All of this, all of this is uh, they using frequencies to bring about the storm. So please let us know Please let us know what's going on in your area. Thank you for listening.